In 2021, I made a video about collapsible silicone containers, and I struggled mightily to make a rectangular collapsible silicone container. Since then, there have been many comments, and I have quite a few unanswered questions about this mysterious process that still need to be answered. My name is Eric Strebel. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. Do you ever get home with all your things, but you have nowhere to set them? So it all just ends up in an ugly, disorganized, and hard to work with pile like this, causing you unneeded stress? Well, don't let it ruin your life. Get an Alfred backpack hanger today. Since that first video, one of my biggest questions is, I've seen molds that are collapsed like in this image. And the question is, can you mold your collapsed item in the collapsed state? Will that work better than molding it in the upright finished state? So this is what the container is supposed to look like and that's my basis. I build some CAD in the collapsed state and make some molds around that CAD of what the part's supposed to be. So this is it collapsed. And then there's a top that goes on top of that as well. And it all gets compressed together. I'm printing these on my Bamboo X1 Carbon, excellent printer for printing stuff really fast very nice link in the description below if you want to get one so these are the two printed molds the top and the bottom and we're going to use some bjb 5150 this is a platinum 50 shore a silicone with some bjb colorant in there as well We'll mix those together and I add a little color because I know that I'm going to be making a bunch of these and this helps me keep track of which one is which. We're going to degas it in the vacuum tank. This is going to remove the air bubbles out of the silicone mixture that were introduced from mixing the two components together. Let's pour this into the mold. Scrape it all out of the cup really good and then put the top on. And I see I have an issue already because there's nothing coming out of the vent holes after it's clapped together. And I break the top. So this is already a problem. And here I am literally destroying the mold just to get the part out. And it's, it's torn and I still can't get it out. So I struggle hugely here and it's not gonna work, unfortunately. So it's possible that this molding process could work, but I need a better way to separate the two halves of the mold. So what I've done is I've put in a bunch of quarter 20 holes and I printed the threads, but I'm just chasing them here with a quarter 20 tap and I'm going to put in a little bit of urethane mold release just to help things along in the hopes that that will make it a little easier to take things apart. Pour the silicone in there again it's the same 5150 BJB Platinum Cure Silicone, nice stuff, and it has the correct durometer for making this. Things are a little tacky on the outside, don't know why, and then because I didn't put any screws or the bolts in the holes, I need to clean those out. And I'm using denatured alcohol to just clean up the mold. Things are a little tacky. We'll put the quarter 20 bolts in here and use a socket to drive the two halves of the mold apart. And of course, 
the bolts aren't long enough so i need a screwdriver to pry the mold apart a little bit more this looks somewhat promising but you can see i've already ripped one of the rings off because of course it's very thin at the hinge points and i'm struggling here i'm using even using some air but ultimately i'm not able to get it to fold in the upright position At this point, I've given up on molding it in the collapsed position, and I'm going to go back to the old original method of molding it in the upright position. And to do this, I'm going to make a three part mold because there's this undercut ring at the very bottom, and this will make it easier to take the part out of the mold. Again, printed on the X1 carbon, super fast, makes these nice time lapses as well. Uh, I like the machine because it prints very quick and uh, link in the description so you can get one. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Johnson's paste wax here. This fills in a little bit of the print lines and will smooth out uh, the print uh, a tiny bit. Again, I'm chasing the quarter 20 holes with the tap. And this time I'll put the bolts in first before I even put the silicone in the mold so I don't have to clean those out and there's no chance of silicone getting into those holes. Again, BJB's 5150 here, I'm adding a little green colorant and I'm using the vibration table here just to help um, float some of the bubbles to the surface. I'm getting the silicone coming out of the weep holes at the top as it should and we let that cure and it looks kind of tacky but it has sort of set up and let's take it apart we'll investigate what's inside screw down all the bolts to separate the mold half and it comes apart oh, too soon some oh jesus this is and this is why platinum silicone sucks so not uniform. I mean, it might've worked, but it's too, too soon. Even though this stuff on the outside is cured and gelled, the stuff on the inside was not the same. So again, could have been a cure, probably a cure inhibition from the wax, something like that. Don't know, very unhappy. Okay, let's try a different release agent. And this is naphtha and petroleum jelly. And this is what I use all the time on silicone. I never have an issue. So I know that this is gonna work. We'll put the silicone in on top of the dental vibration tool. Again, there'll be a link for that below. Super helpful for floating air bubbles out of silicone. And so I'm concerned here already again because it's all tacky, but it did set up on the inside. I don't quite understand. I use some air to blow the silicone off of the mold and this works pretty good, but I got some air bubbles. So I have some success here uh, with this platinum silicone and I'm just gonna trim up the little bit of flash on the top, but I got some air bubbles in here and that's just not gonna do for the client. So we're gonna have to make another one, but I'm having success here in terms of collapsibility and having it stand upright. So I know that molding it in the upright position works. I'm gonna use some 1040 from silicone ink this is not a platinum uh silicone because i know it's going to set up and i'm not going to have any sort of issues with this tin cure uh silicone the one thing about this is only a, a 40 uh, durometer and it's a little soft for collapsible containers they tend to be a stiffer sort of silicone but I know I'm gonna have success and I'm gonna get a part that's good. I use some air to loosen it from the sides, push that part out the bottom. And you can see sort of how floppy it is, but it's a really nice piece and it does collapse. Okay, so I'm gonna use a tin cure silicone. I'm using silicone inks P44 and I tint it. 
Again, it's not platinum cure, so I know I'm not gonna have any issues with it curing. It's clear, I'm able to put a little tint in it and we'll drive the two molds uh, halves apart here and the bottom. And of course it's cured, no issue whatsoever. One of the great things about tin cure silicone, it just works every time. And this gives me a really nice uh, flawless part. There's no bubbles in here, it's well formed. I'm just trimming off a little bit of the flash at the top and then the little vent holes right here. And this gives me a successful part. There's a little hole in the middle and this is a vent hole for the product. Collapses really nice. It's stiff enough because it's a 50 shore uh, silicone. You can see the difference between the two here. Where's the softer on the right? It's a 55 or a 60 shore or something like that. And that's very close to what you would get in a consumer product silicone container. So super successful. I think really the key is using the right silicone, one with the correct durometer uh, that has a little more stiffness and good wall thickness, and that's gonna give you the best results for a collapsible container. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Make sure to hit the bell so you get notifications every time I have a new video. Don't forget to follow me on social media at Bots and Design. I'm now on Blue Sky and unfortunately still on Instagram. Rock on. Don't forget to check out the t-shirts and hoodies in the merch shelf below. Click here to check out some of the other design and making videos that I have that you might enjoy.